Ah, and we have no sound on Audacity. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Today is Tuesday, October 22nd. I'm Bruce Turner in Lynchburg, Virginia. I'm Dennis DeVoe from Calgary, Alberta, Canada. I used to be George from uh, Scotland, but now I'm Jeff from Napa. I'm Robert from San Bernardino. And I'm Robert Taylor in New Orleans, Louisiana. All right, I'm Duke Carrico. Hey, on this edition of Tech and Coffee's Android Journal, the Nexus 5, we're going to talk about what we know and what we don't know. The Amazon phones, what we know and what we don't. Google's going to unveil a new Play Store very, very soon. We're going to talk about BBM for Android messaging. Is it innovation or is it just a Me Too product at this point? Hey, man, all of that, much, much more. Good evening, panel. Good evening. Good evening, Howdy. evening Mr. Duke. Good evening. All Good right. Evening. So uh, George left us, man. I was going to give George a chance to... Give us a little uh, update on Og Camp. Uh, he's over on the other side of the pond. He's gone. Uh, Going to miss that. Uh, just uh, welcome everybody. Let's get on with the show. All right, gang. Finally, I think we can say some for sure things about the Nexus 5. Nexus 5 appeared briefly on Google's Play Store. Uh, we're talking about a 16 gigabyte version. Here's what we know: 16 gigabyte is uh, going to go for 349. What we don't know is what the 32 gigabyte version is going to sell for. Now, this new version, this new uh, Nexus 5, is going to include Android 4.4 KitKat. There's been some screenshots. We're sure about that. Evidently. With the Nexus 5 retail box that has leaked out on the internet, there is apparently going to be a white version in addition to the black version. We still don't know the release date, but we still think it's late October. Now then, there was a rumor out there that there was going to be the 32 gigabyte version was going to feature a larger battery. We now know that is not true, just based on FCC filings. So that is what we know and we don't know about the Nexus 5. Uh, so let's see. Dennis, Yep. tell me what you think, man. Well, first of all, I have to uh, admit one thing right now. I was wrong. I kept saying I didn't know if it would be called the Nexus 5 just because what are they going to do in 2015? But uh, maybe they'll call it the Nexus Air or something. I don't know. Nonetheless, um, it still looks like it's going to be an interesting phone. Um, for those who have a Nexus 4, I think it actually will be a significant upgrade, mainly because of the... Uh, the processor and everything in that as well. And it's great to see that we're finally going to get a 32 gigabyte version. Okay. Anybody else got any comments on what we know or don't know against the Nexus 5? Well, we don't know if they're going to market it primarily as a phone, a tablet, or a phablet. Well, I think at five inches now, that's pretty standard for, for a phone. A lot of people would have said, you know, that was too big a while back. I don't think uh, people feel that way anymore. It's well, not the Sony Xperia Z Ultra, 6.4-inch <laughs> screen. Well, my Note 3 has got uh, just a little bit bigger than a 5-inch screen, and they sort of marketed it as a phone fab, sort of a hybrid between a tablet and a phone. That's a 5.7-inch screen, so that's quite a bit bigger. Yeah, I would call your phone a phablet. I wouldn't call five inches necessarily a phablet. Yeah, but, you know, where is the industry going to draw the lines? This is a cell phone. This is a tablet. This is the hybrid phablet. I no, don't no. think the industry cares. They're going to make yeah. different yeah. size devices, and as long as they sell, they'll keep making them. Yeah, it'll oh, be the, the Samsung approach, you know. I'm going to put everything on the on the wall, and you grab whatever you want to take. Yeah, that's I, LG. You know, I do. I think I think we'll see. Uh, I I really do believe that uh, the next time that Apple unveils an iPhone, I believe it's going to be a larger, wider screen. I I really believe that. 
All right, hey man, I'm moving on. I'm moving on. Let's wait, talk wait, wait, about... wait, wait, wait. I, I, I got one question, I, or one statement. I have run out of fingers talking about the Nexus Five because we have talked about it. One, two, three, four, five. Eight, a lot of weeks in a row. When the darn thing is going to show up? I, I'm <laughs> Next tired Monday. of the pictures. I'm tired of hearing about this. Where is the darn thing? I just want to know if I can get it on Verizon. Well, you know, hey, hey, Robert, I'm seeing a pattern. You know, I mean, the X phone was the same way till it finally actually did show up. In fact, I called it the uh, what? What did I call it? The, the uh, unicorn. unicorn. Yeah, the unicorn, the X phone unicorn. Absolutely, people swore it existed, but nobody had never seen it. You know. Well, I'm gonna call this thing the leprechaun. That's all I got to say. <laughs> Well, I gotta tell you, when you said unicorn, my little uh, Android buddy here started laughing. <laughs> yeah, she was laughing because I'm a redneck, not because I said unicorn. Hey, you talk about throwing stuff on the wall. What about LG fixing to come out with uh, a Chrome OS uh, laptop, desktop, and all that other kind of stuff? You talk about and throwing stuff on the wall. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think we're gonna see a convertible. A Chromebook convertible. In fact, that is on the docket to talk about later on tonight. So, uh, hey, I'm moving on, guys. Uh, here's what we know and we don't know about the Amazon phone. Now, uh, to set this up, just let me make this clear. Amazon's been rumored for years now to be making a phone. And, you know, we, uh, we thought we might see a phone when we saw the Fire Tablet. And since we've seen the tablet, we've heard a lot of talk about Android going to come to the phone. Well, check this out. Financial Times is citing people familiar with the project that's claiming that Amazon has partnered with HTC to create three, three <laughs> smartphones, okay? And the speculation is that one of those might be tied to you got to be a prime member. Uh, one of them is going to be what we consider high end. A second one's probably going to be considered uh, uh, bare bones. But I think it's interesting that Amazon's getting into the game, and I think Amazon keeps proving uh, they certainly proved it with the Kindle Fire. That uh, you know, if they do this, they're going to do it right, and they're going to be a force. Okay. Uh, now there is speculation around this that Google's not going to like HTC building phones for for Amazon, and let's not forget that HTC is part of Google's handset alliance. You know, where Google partnered with all these people, basically telling them that, you know, you're going to take the operating system that we're going to give you, and, you know, Amazon took that and they forked it. They kind of made their own version of it. Of course, you know, that eliminated them from using stuff like Google Maps and, or the Google Play Store. And there's a lot of speculation around here that if HTC builds a forked version of Android, HTC will be locked out of that handset alliance. And, uh, Jeff? What's your thoughts around that? Well, you know, I, you know. First of all, I don't know how much Google really cares about Amazon having its own ecosystem, as long as it has Android up, a, a version of Android on it, as much as everyone else here. So, I, uh, you know, I think their biggest thing is, you know, let's saturate the market with Android devices. You know, let's keep that going. But, at, but for what HTC is doing, what we talked about last week is still holds true this week. It's to their advantage to do something with Amazon. I mean, it is full on their advantage to do it because you know Samsung seems to have that kind of uh, I don't want to say cachet of momentum of the phone for the Android devices and, and, and so and it's continued to do that. So I think HTC needed a, a, a strong partner and they found one in Amazon. So good for them, you know. And I, will Google? Uh, how will they react? We don't know what kind of if it's a fourth version or not, but uh, people, um, I think more choices are better. I'm, how I'm will they fan. react if HTC follows through with uh, Microsoft's request to have a dual dual boot phone where, or tablet where you can boot into uh, you know Windows 8 or uh, or Android? 
again, you know, I think that's I think it's a wise thing. It's wise for Microsoft because they 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 can't, you know, they're not they're not making any penetration anywhere. So jump jump in here, Robert Albert. Yeah, I'm just wondering who the carrier would be. I mean, it's going to be quote an Amazon phone, but is it going, who's going to who who's going to be the network carrier? AT and T, Verizon, pick your. I, I think unlocked, because I think it's going to be sold directly through Amazon, not the carriers. Kind of like yeah. right. kind of like some of the uh, Nexus Five phones. And well, subsidized too, perhaps, right? Robert Robert Taylor, what's your thoughts, man? Well, I think it's interesting. I'm going to pull a Jeff here for a minute. I was looking over some of the articles, and they were talking about HTC, and HTC having to have posted their first earnings loss in a quarter here recently since they went public. And, you know, they're walking a pretty precarious line. While aligning with Amazon certainly benefits them financially, they are going to, be have, they are going to have to be careful as to how far away from Google they're going to distance themselves. I mean, you don't want to become isolated putting out some third-party off-branded phone that's not really picked up by anybody. The Nexus line that Google sells in that manner doesn't sell extremely well. You know, carriers are not quick to pick it up, therefore it doesn't get exposure to the public. You know, they don't want to go down that road too far away from, from Google. You know, I, I think they're going to still try and walk the fence between the two big players here. As far as the Microsoft thing, trying to get them to, you know, dual boot or provide dual boots for phones, I think that's a pretty slim or awkward line for them to to even consider. I, I don't think they would do it. Well, what, what what about this? You know, the Android market is so saturated out there. You know, wonder if HTC's thinking, you know, we might just hitch our wagon to the uh, to the Amazon train. I don't know if you noticed today, but Amazon increased their prices for uh, for two day shipping. Uh, uh, the the amount that you have to you know pay to get the two day shipping. Of course, some people think they're just trying to drive people to Amazon Prime. What if they're also thinking about driving people to an Amazon phone? You get our Amazon phone, and we're going to give you some deals. It, and, it could be a big thing for HTC. And okay. just to, just go ahead. I'm sorry. First of all, I just want to get this in here. Steve Barry is asking, will the Nexus 4 get the 4.4 uh, KitKat update? Uh, Pretty you know much. I, I, I think it'll happen. I think yeah. it'll happen. I have not personally read anything, but given uh, Google's history with Nexus devices, I believe it will get it, absolutely. Yeah, usually it's like usually it takes at least a full version before the previous device becomes obsolete pretty much. Mm -hmm. Like they just recently made it the Galaxy Nexus wouldn't get a version of Android, I believe it was. Um, it might have even been 4.3, honestly. So the Nexus 4, there's a good chance it's going to get 4.4, uh, but whether it gets whatever the next version's called, that's going to be the question. May I say one last thing about Amazon? Would that I be okay? actually jump in there because I, I want to say something. Go ahead, Jim. Okay, all right. I got two things to say. Well, one thing to dovetail off um, what Bruce has said that they upgrade the, the $35 now for the minimum shipping. But the other thing is, yesterday I got in the, the mail a letter from Amazon saying, hey, you're an Amazon Prime customer, but you haven't been using our instant video Amazon Prime, um, you know, streaming. Did you? Are you aware of it? Blah blah blah. So they're really making a strong push in their, you know, um, the streaming side of their business, right? And they're seeing Netflix, you know, go up 400%. Uh, you know, I think the phone, all that stuff, is a strategic move to get people to start streaming content for Amazon Prime instant video stuff. Okay, here's here's uh, here's my thoughts. I, I was hoping someone else might touch on it because early on when we started talking about this, Jeff, you said that you didn't think Google cared. Yeah. Uh, that you know which that that uh, HTC would make a forked version. Uh, right now, Google makes money on Android through their advertising. Okay, they don't make any money through Amazon's advertising because it's a forked version. Okay, Amazon basically took that code and added code to it. Okay, yeah. uh, and and I think that HTC being part of this handset alliance, I be I believe it will be a problem for HTC going forward. But uh, according to this article from Android Authority, 
Uh, Wall Street Journal reported in late August that HTC is developing a new operating system for the Chinese market. Hey, listen, we're talking about this like HTC's talking to uh, uh, Amazon about uh, this operating system. I think everybody is assuming that it's going to be Android that they're putting on it. We don't know that. I'm going to say one last thing because I like to argue. Um, you know. It, I don't think the reason why I don't think Google cares about the Amazon fork version is because their stock went over a thousand dollars. Why did their stock go over a thousand dollars? All that mobile searching. What engine are they using? They're using Google to look at things, searching through mobile devices. So if it's on an if it's on a Kindle device, if it's on whatever, it's mobile searching. They're going to get their money regardless, even though it's a fork version. I've got a quick thing as well. This is like a digital Sadie Hawkins dance with HTC looking for us more more suitors. Absolutely, absolutely, and they need more. They need more. They're uh, they're in a tough spot right now, and uh, I, I'm hoping it works out for them. Really, I am. Hey, okay. I want to move on, guys. Uh, Google has confirmed that October 24th, that's this Thursday, uh, they are holding an event. For Night Out, it's a Google Play event. Now, we've been talking about Nexus and KitKat, so forth, so on. There is no evidence whatsoever that we're going to hear anything about it at this event. And you can find, if you want to sideload, you can go sideload the new version of the Play Store right now. Uh, just want to throw it out to the panel. What are you guys speculating? Are we going to get any surprises out of this event Thursday night? Uh, Dennis? Um, well, actually, when I first heard about this uh, night out event, the first thing I thought was, of course, Nexus 5, Nexus 10, etc. But um, then I, I believe it was Engadget again who had mentioned that they had received info from Google that there would not be an announcement. So it's not a matter of Confirm nor like it's not a matter of uh, speculation. It's it, it, I don't think it's necessarily going to happen um, unless they go and really surprise us. But I can't see them saying there won't be an announcement and then there is. So I think it's more just to celebrate five years of Android. Google Glass is going to be available for Christmas shipping. Oh gosh, <laughs> we should have known. I can't even <laughs> believe I can that you would know. even go there after I have embarrassed you now for ten months. I can't. I was, I've been patiently waiting for Dennis to just to get that little quiet moment so I could jump in there and has that joke. But no, I, or who how knows about what I'm do. Night out, watch out. Watch out. Uh, maybe, maybe. All right. Hey, I'm moving on, guys. Uh, listen. BlackBerry. We have talked on this show uh, about BlackBerry probably as much as we have about the Nexus 5, and it's not even an Android device. BlackBerry has just, uh, it, it's been sad, and Dennis being Canadian, I know that BlackBerry is near and dear to his heart. Uh, they've, uh, they've been working on this messaging app for iOS and Android, and uh, man, they just, they had such a hard time just trying to get the app into the Android store, and there were all of these knockoffs, and they pulled it back because they had these problems. Well, they went live with it this week, and all indications are that this has been very successful. Dennis has got it on his phone. I'm, I'm waiting on my invite. I've made the email request. Uh, I, I don't think that this alone is going to, you know, it's certainly not going to turn BlackBerry around, but with this legendary uh, messaging app, I just wanted to give the panel a chance to talk about it. And, Dennis, on this one, I really want to start with you again. Okay. Well, um, first of all, you raised a good point that I do not think, like, or let's just say this right now. BBM is not going to save BlackBerry. It's not a matter of I don't think. It's I know it's not going to save them. Um, they have to do something else. That being said, um, despite the fact that other messaging platforms like WhatsApp, uh, they just announced that they have, I believe it was 400 million active users versus about 70 million for BBM. Now, the thing I see, though, is BBM was the first 
um, client of its type. The first messaging app that uh, is basically a secure platform allows you to see if people have read or um, if your messages have been delivered, things like that. And obviously there's some interest in it because in less than 24 hours it's already seen a million downloads on the Android store alone. This isn't even iOS. So is it going to save BlackBerry? No. Is it a good move? I think it is, especially um, if if people want to communicate uh, with, like in a corporate setting, where they may not be able to install all kinds of apps on their Blackberries. So they may not be able to install like Kick Messenger, WhatsApp, on a corporate Blackberry. But with the Android BBM, they could easily still communicate. So I think it's a good move for BlackBerry, even though it's later than planned. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, Robert Taylor. Let me jump in. Let me jump in. Yep. Because I said this in the stream, Dennis, and I'm going to say it now. You sure can. BBM is a dying gasp. BlackBerry Messenger is nothing but BlackBerry taking its last ditch effort, its last hurrah into the foray before they go belly up. And I'm telling you, BlackBerry is bucking for the lead role as the lead zombie in the next episode of The Walking Dead. This company is so far lost and gone, I'm surprised that we're still talking about it, and I'm surprised that there's so much interest in it. They're not going to be here this time next year. The app will cease to exist. Why would anybody in the corporate world be willing to allow their users to install this is beyond me. It escapes me completely. Hey, I, I want to ask my little Android angel, what do you think about BlackBerry Messenger? Oh, down. Uh, okay. Well, All right. you know. Let's clear one thing up, though, is people, like Robert said that BlackBerry isn't going to be around in a year. Um, the bottom line is, even though BlackBerry's in a lot of trouble right now, and they're probably they're going to be sold to someone, either Fairfax Financial, Lenovo, whatever. The fact is, I don't think they're going to be gone in a year. Um, they, they are losing a lot of money, yes, but they still have a decent amount in reserves. They've still got 70 million active users. They're not just going to disappear yeah, overnight. Here, yeah, here's, okay. the here's, here's the deal. One, one last thing. The parts of the company are worth more than the the company whole. So it's just a part that they're trying to build up, and it's that's it. It's going to be a part that's going to be parceled out. For, and it could even be all, like stuff dealing with BBM. It could go to a third party. Who knows? I, well, and, and that's a good point. That's a good point. But but here here's my take on it. And and Dennis, I, I think I, I agree with a lot of what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. But yep. but here's why. I don't think that BlackBerry Messenger even has any staying power, okay? You're talking about a million downloads the first 24 hours, man. That's impressive, okay? I can think of similar launches, though, to where we've had all of these multiple downloads, and then here later, we're, we, we, we don't even talk about them. You know, Foursquare's got 50 million, over 50 million users, but... Uh, Probably uh, about 10% uh, of those are active users. And when I say active, I'm talking about they're checking in monthly. People lose interest in these things. And and at this point, with BlackBerry Messenger coming on, you've got iMessage for uh, uh, iOS. Uh, you've got Hangouts. You've got Kick Messenger. You've got WhatsApp. You've got Snapchat. And these people are they're, they're not just using these apps as individuals they're using them because their friends are using them it's the Google Plus Facebook scenario okay uh, I like Google Plus better I still have a Facebook account why because all of my friends are on it why are all my friends on it because all their friends are on it and yeah, and I just think that black that Blackberry Messenger it might be a superior app to what they're using but they're not going to leave it unless they can convince their friends to leave it with them. That's true, and I, I'm not denying that at all. Um, I, I think time is going to tell for sure. I mean, I, I really hope that, say, in a month or two, 
BlackBerry actually says how many active users there are. Um, I, I want to come back to this by around the Christmas time and see if anything's changed with it for sure. I would say if you're going to revisit this particular issue after Christmas, sometime, sometime after New Year, because okay. we're coming into the Christmas season, and this is the best chance for BlackBerry. Either they got to do a release, do a surprise release of a new product or something. But if BlackBerry just doesn't get some needed, not influx of cash, but influx of users in their yep. system, and positive news that too. Yeah, and positive news. Yeah, someone's gonna, uh, some corporate radio is just gonna buy it, chop it up, and sell it off. Literally. Oh. Let, let's see what happens in three months, then. That'll take us I, to the end of I, January. I think it's a good plan. I think it's a good plan. I will tell you, I've got a... Uh, I've actually started looking back, uh, you know, for uh, another show that we do called Tech News Week. I ask everyone to make predictions. And uh, I actually watched that video the other day, and uh, I, I just want to say right now, that's going to be a great show coming up, guys. I think... Uh, think it's going to be a lot of fun. Hey, Tanya Bolas has made a comment that she's downloaded BBM and she thinks it's nothing big. People can just text instead of BBM. Uh, I think that's true, but I think BBM offers some flexibility that's just not there and just plain old text. So, yeah, well, like multi longer messages. Um, and again, more secure. Now, we've had this discussion before of how, of how many people are actually concerned about security. Um, when it comes to texting, different things like that. So I, I see her point, and I, I've definitely seen that idea. But it's um, even communicating with groups. You can't really easily do that with texting. It gets really convoluted. Agreed. But Agreed. there are other ways as well. So I, I can, I definitely understand people who are opposed to it. And I'm not saying that it's going to be the best thing since sliced bread. But... There's pros and cons to anything is how I see it. Well, I, I, Dennis, I, I will promise you this yeah, uh, yeah. because, uh, listen, I, I can tell you have a little bit more passion around this than at least I do. I will promise you this. I'm going to get an invite, and I'm going to install it, and, uh, yeah, maybe two or three of us, but I definitely want your contact information. I want to give it a fair shake, man, and, and For sure. I might eat my words before it's over with. If, if I like it, you know I'll tout it. Okay. Because, you know, I like my Chromebook. I like my little Samsung Chromebook, and and this article caught my attention here about LG's getting ready to uh, to launch some Chrome devices, and it sounds like uh, they're going to actually uh, launch three of them. And uh, one of, let's see, I'm trying to find what they called them. Uh, Bruce, you said them at the beginning of the show there. Let's see. Uh, the Chrome One, the Chrome Desk, and the Chrome Station. Now, we don't know what any of that means, but that are that are that is the names that they're going to run with. I'm guessing that Chrome One is going to be a laptop. Chrome Desk is going to be a, a desktop. And Chrome Station, what in the world is that going to be? I don't know, man. <laughs> Maybe it's the combination of Chrome OS and Chromecast. Who knows? Well, I was thinking that the, the Chrome station would be like a central house server sort of thing for all, all the other uh, Chrome OS devices. You know, like a media center, file server, that sort of thing. Possibly. Possibly could be. Any other thoughts? Oh, Not too man. sure, honestly. <laughs> oh, you mean about Chrome Station versus you know, well, Chrome OS? Well, just about these Chrome devices there. What do you think they're going to be? I mean, LG's getting into the game here. Yeah, well, they, they, you know, again, because, you know, it's the writing's on the wall that these are um, so getting more and more traction, especially in schools and, uh, and other places. And, you know, rumor has it there's going to be a new Chromatic uh, kind of a show coming up. So, you know, I think... Um, I think LG just wants to jump on that bandwagon so it could be part of it. Hey, Bruce, uh, you got any passion around this uh, LG announcement? I, you know, I think it's interesting that there are some people who are very interested in having a Chrome OS tablet. Uh, and I think if they came out with a Chrome OS tablet that was kind of like the, uh, you know, Windows RT, you know, with a keyboard, uh, it, it, could be, uh, it could be a nice thing. 
Yeah, if we, if we, you know, we're talking like touch screen, uh, keyboard, you unhook it. Yeah, absolutely, man. Right. Well, I'll tell you what, this one's going to be fun to watch at this point in time. It's uh, it's a whole lot of rumor and a little bit of hearsay, so uh, let's uh, let's keep our ears to the ground and see what happens here. All right, man. We were talking earlier about uh, uh, Google and, and uh, forked versions of Android. Let's talk about the money that Google is spending on Motorola. Okay? Uh, apparently, in just the last few months, Google has dropped a billion dollars. And, of course, uh, Jeff, you mentioned that Google stock now is over $1,000 a share. Yeah. Uh, Google's got money to burn. Uh, this is, does this matter short term? Um, does it really? Uh, well, I think, like, if, if for them, you know, it's an investment, right? It's an investment. And they're looking for the long term. Google has always looked long term. When they bought YouTube, they didn't... Uh, it wasn't making money to begin with, right? It wasn't. It wasn't profitable. Now what it's. A, they, it's a what, it seems like it paid like three hundred million dollars for YouTube. Yeah, uh, yeah, but that was back what ten years ago, right? Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, spending a billion dollars. Okay, wow. They, they make a billion dollars a day. You know, I mean, I don't know how much money they make a day, but it's 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 up there, right? So, um, I think I think it's it's like, um, okay, here's my thing. It's when we when I was working for this company, we decided that um, because we were doing these um, controller things, that since the other controllers boards weren't doing something, we were going to manufacture one ourselves. And just the threat of us, you know, deciding to do the, um, our own uh, controller board made the other manufacturers come up and start doing things. And I think that's part of it. When when Google says, "Okay, we're going to start, you know, producing our own phones. We're going to show you what the what they're capable of. Why stock Android is important. All these things, right? And a, a price point that's maybe more competitive. It it forces the other vendors to start doing things. And that's how I think they're looking at. It. They they have a long view, not a short view. They have a long view. So billion a billion dollars is not a lot of money to them to get that message across. It, Probably well worth it. Well, I, I, so they they dropped twelve point five billion on Motorola, and they fi they've laid off six thousand people, over six thousand people since they've acquired it, and now they spent a billion dollars, and I guarantee you they hadn't made that back yet in the Motorola X. Go ahead, Robert Taylor. Uh, I, I was just going to say that that's absolutely the case it, it, with Motorola and Google. You know, the, the, the projection is a billion dollars a year. How long they can continue to do that, that, that's a good question. Nobody can answer that for sure. But certainly, Google is looking at it like it's an investment, and it's going along with uh, Motorola. And to prove what Jeff is saying, look at what the carriers and other manufacturers have started to do. They've rolled back the skins on their devices to be more Nexus-like, not adding as much of the, the crap and the bloatware on top. They've started to scroll back a little bit. So certainly Google having Motorola in, in their portfolio saying, we're going to show you how it's done. These other manufacturers are starting to realize, wait a minute, we can't just do what we want because if... Motorola comes out with a pure Android device, we're going to lose our users. So that definitely has propagated a change in just the last year that Google has owned Motorola. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is, is that if they decide to, they want to use proprietary hardware, They've got a company now that can manufacture it for them without having to outsource. Uh, you know, I, I think that's kind of a sticky situation. They, they've got all these partners in Samsung and uh, and HTC, LG, and and others, uh, Sony, and yeah. and I think they have to be very very careful about what they do in house versus what they're sharing with their partners. Oh, yeah, I agree. There, but they, but they, they they do a good job of sharing the love, though. 
Yeah, but you see, the thing is, is that if someone decides to go completely off the reservation, they have a they have a backup to okay, we can't work with Company X anymore because they're just totally off the reservation. Well, we can take up the slack that these people have left us in with our own in-house. Yeah. Does, that, does anyone remember, we had that slide a couple, maybe a month ago, showing the uh, Android penetration by vendor. Uh, what was, what, yeah. does anyone remember yeah, what Motorola required. was? Yeah. Yeah. What was the, what was Motorola's? Was it like 5%, something like that, or? No, no, Motorola was, uh, I, well, they were uh, they were right there with LG, the best I remember, and they were they were on down in the thing. It was uh, you, you know, when this was over the history, the five year history, I think actually Samsung Samsung had a huge chunk of it. I believe I believe HTC was next. I but it was I, it wasn't I, it, it, it wasn't look. it was up there though, right? Oh, here we go. Is this the one? I don't know how recent this is, but uh, I just did a quick Google search and found this. I don't know how. Uh, let's see. What does this say for Motorola? That wasn't the graph. Oh, no, that's old. That's old. Yeah. Never mind. That's old. Yeah. Hey, um, guys, listen. I've rushed us through a lot of these because I wanted to spend a lot of time here. Not a lot of time, but, but some time. Uh, first of all, uh, Let's talk about mobile technology and what we've seen over the last 40 years, okay? First of all, I want to take us back to 1973, okay? Uh, Motorola basically was in competition with Bell Laboratories, and uh, uh, they th these, these guys, they had a strong rivalry. And uh, one gentleman by the name of uh, Martin Cooper from Motorola, he uh, used what was known back then as a Motorola Dynatac, and he called Joel Engel over at the Bell Laboratories at AT and T, and basically told him, you know, hey, I'm I'm calling calling you from from a mobile device. So, about eleven years later, the first cell phone goes on sale for the public. Okay. And I mean, a lot has happened since that moment that he made that first mobile phone call. Uh, you know, the the there's been infrastructure that's been built up. You know, first of all, uh, our first mobile network was a 1G service. It was based on analog technology, but basically that kind of paved the way for our digital technology today. In 1993, let me uh, let me put this up right here. In 1993, we had the development of the SMS, or the Short Message Service. And uh, texting, you know, it really didn't take off when it was first unveiled, but we all know uh, uh, how texting has grown now. Okay? Uh, touchscreen also debuted in 1993. Uh, internet access. I mean, big deal that you had a mobile phone that you could talk, talk. You know, you you could take with you and make phone calls. You could not do the internet. And in 1996, we had the Nokia 9000 communicator, the first cell phone to offer proper internet access. And uh, then also in 1996, email and uh, BlackBerry email service launched in 1999, uh, basically, uh, and, and built built an empire around that email service that you could do mobile. Yeah, a company called RIM back then. Also in 1999, we actually had a phone with a GPS in it. It would be some years later before it was common, but... I mean, in 1999, that was cool, okay? 2000, we started seeing MP3 players in phones. Uh, also in 2000, we saw a camera phone in Japan, which was a, a, had a 0 0.11 megapixel sensor, but it wasn't until 2002 till Sanyo brought one to the States in a phone. Finally, in 2009, we've had voice control. Now, my question to you guys Right here is the list that I just read you. 
Everybody gets a vote. And viewers, I would love to hear from you also. What do you think is the one single most advancement in mobile technology past the invention of the cell phone? I would have to list? Say it. I'd have to split it into two. Nope, nope. You can't. You can't pick two. You didn't listen to my rules. You got to pick <laughs> one. <laughs> Let me explain this. I would. I would have to lump email into internet access because that's predominantly where email. All right. Now you've said it. Now pick one. Internet access. I'd be in agreement. Internet access. All right, I got I, I got something, but it's I'm gonna go with internet access. But I have also I want to say one other thing. All right, yep. the impact of the global technology or global business that the economy around the cell phone industry. As I said, infrastructure is still in process of being built up. I've already made that point. No, the, but I'm just saying how much money has been oh, generated. Yeah, absolutely. Say like the oh, is or just, not, No, no, I'm not talking about I'm not, not I'm talking okay. about just you know the size of companies, their net worth, how much money people spend on phones, all the gadgets. It is just a, it's a behemoth. Bruce and Robert I'm going to say streaming media, podcast, video, music. So that would be uh, internet access. I mean, the MP3 player was there, but yeah, internet access made streaming happen. Right. Yeah. Without a doubt, it's internet access. The device is nothing without its store of vast knowledge available. All the other things that we see here are basically the brand of tires that you put on your car. The truth of the matter is, without gas in the engine to take you where you're going, the car is useless. The Internet is the winner. Okay. I, I, and listen, I'm down with that. But uh, all right, man. Listen, that was fun. But now then, I'm going to ask every one of you, what is going to be the next big thing in mobile technology. Robert Taylor, I'll start with you this time. Um, if, if I had to guess, we're actually going to get to the point where we have implant technology. I believe that's where we're headed next. And I don't mean wearable technology, I mean physical implant technology. Mm. I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, like getting up in the morning and, uh, you know, inserting my eye suppository. That's going to be awesome, I'm telling you. <laughs> uh, hey, Robert Albert, what's the next big thing, buddy? I would have to say the next big thing in, quote, cell phone technology would be when they finally get a solid state drives small enough so that you can actually put things like Microsoft Office or LibreOffice or you know, more applications onto something that small and you still be easily usable. Mm. You know, powerful enough to do you know, just really beef out the technology to do more with the device. So you don't need a cell phone and a tablet or a laptop. It's all the one device. Okay. I, I, I agree with you. I said something uh, similar, I think, on predictions. Jeff Zeiss, what do you think, buddy? Uh, well, I try not to think, but I'm going to go for a guess. Um, you know, for me, it's interoperability, okay, where everything is ubiquitous. I love the word ubiquitous. But the cell phone is just going to be connected to everything. Right, the device will be able to, you know, you will be able to go shopping with your device to tell you what aisle or what the product is at. You'll be able to uh, communicate with your refrigerator. Will tell you when it's out of, you know, a certain product that you have to go buy eggs. All that stuff, all the appliance technology is interoperable to your device. 
Jeff, so, would you spell ubiquitous? For I me? was going to ask him that, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to if my brain would work because I can't think. But no, for me, it's the whole how everything is just going to – every appliance you know that, you know, is going to be talking to your phone or connecting to your phone or connecting to that device, yeah. telling you what you have to do or, or what is missing or what is going on, yes, all that. I think, Robert Albert, I think Robert Albert was touching on that same idea, absolutely. Yep. Yeah, but Jeff's going to be in line for the implantable device. Yeah. Try to go, go for the ubiquitous. Hey, 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 Dennis DeVoe, jump in here, man. For me... Um, for me, I don't think we're quite ready for implant devices. Um, I don't think we're quite there yet, so we're going to go the stage just before that, and that is going to be the wearable. Um, now, of course, on a side note, uh, let me just say, if if I was someone from Samsung, I'd say the next big thing is already here, but I digress there a bit. Um, anyway... Um, I, I definitely think it's going to be wearables. I think next year we're really going to see a big push for the smartwatch. Um, maybe by the end of next year, early to 2015, we're going to get Google Glass. I saw what you were doing there, Jeff. <laughs> maybe that, maybe something like that. Be it Google Glass, be it a competing product, but definitely next year, I think is going to be the year of the smartwatch. The year the smartwatch finally starts doing things that will make it useful. You always see the glass half full, don't you? <laughs> of course. Sure. Uh, so, uh, hey, I made a prediction about Google Voice coming to Canada, and I've been way off. And if you guys have actually noticed, a lot of my predictions don't come true. So, yeah, maybe I should think half Maybe I should think uh, glass half full instead of full. <laughs> Fair enough. Hey, Bruce, what's the next big thing, man? Smaller, faster, better voice recognition, um, uh, and, and, and wearable. I, I think voice recognition is going to become really big, uh, connecting us with all of the data that's out there, being able to ask questions, artificial intelligence. I think that's going to be the next big thing. All right. Here's what I think the next big thing is. I think the next big thing is better internet access. Okay, I I really think, and don't get me wrong, I I think all you guys made some really big points, but I don't I I still think even though internet access came to mobile in 1996 and we can see where it is in 2013, I think we've still got a way to go. And uh, be it Wi-Fi, be it data connection, no, I don't think 5G is the answer. But I think better coverage for all carriers. Uh, you, you know, we've we've still got some work to do around there. I hope Google tries their best to address it, other than you know putting fiber in a few cities. They, they uh, need to launch a few balloons, is what you're saying. Well, it may that that might not be a bad thing. Absolutely, that's that's a good point. I do have one surprising thing to note. None of us mentioned battery life. That's a good point. That's a good point. And battery life is, a, yeah, that's that's a problem. Hey, gang, uh, viewers or Stitcher Radio listeners, uh, follow us on Twitter or Facebook at Tech and Coffee One. Our YouTube channel is Tech and Coffee. You can listen to our audio podcast, Stitcher Radio and iTunes. Just search on Tech and Coffee's Tech Newsweek or Android Journal. Our favorite social network is Google Plus. Just search on Tech and Coffee and look for that T and C logo. Questions, comments, and snide remarks, send them to AJ at techandcoffee.info. Hey, guys, let's move into the app segment of tonight's show. Bruce, you got one for us, man? Yeah, I do have uh, an app, so let me go ahead and uh, share my screen with you. Um, I'm, uh, I'm interested in a lot of what's going on in the Middle East. And I will introduce Matt called the whole internet brand. This is going to have an even but it's... Hey Bruce. Uh, we're, 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 it's uh all over the world. <laughs> hey Bruce. Crash and burn. 
Yeah, Bruce, we're we're uh, we're not getting every third or fourth word you're saying there, my friend. We're just uh, yeah, there he went. Yeah. Hey, Dennis, what you got for us, man? Yeah. All right, so um, the app that I'm going to mention here is called The Score, and it is a sports app. Now, The Score is actually a Canadian network, and I actually just had to verify with someone that it is available in the States as well. So since we lost Bruce there, I didn't quite have it fully up and running, but just bear with me one moment here. All right. So what it is, it basically lets you keep track of your favorite sports teams. And the thing that I really like about it is it is not just um, it, it's not just NFL, it's not just NHL. It covers almost everything. Now, of course, it's not going to load. AirDroid's not going to load for me, which it did before. Um, come on, AirDroid. I seem to always have these problems. Last week I had a problem. My app just kept crashing on me. But what it is, here, let me just see if I can uh, show a screen here just a moment. So what it does, for example, is it gives me a list of the different uh, sports teams. Let me uh, see if I can get a way to show this. So it'll give me a list of like my upcoming CFL games, my Canadian football games. And while the games are going on... Um, I can have a favorite team, so if I want to follow the Calgary Stampeders or for NHL, the Calgary Flames, um, it'll actually give me highlights like in terms of notifications. So it'll tell me, oh, um, like Calgary scored or the opposing team scored. And it's really nice if I can't actually watch the game if I'm doing other things. It just gives me a nice alert for that. So it's a free app. And in terms of the sports that it supports... Let me just go here. It's NHL hockey, football, um, MLB baseball, NBA basketball, NCAA football, mixed martial arts, uh, various soccer, PGA golf, NASCAR racing. So it's very in-depth um, in terms of what you can follow. And I don't think there's a limit to how many teams you can follow, so you can get notifications for almost everything if you wanted to. And I think it's just a handy app uh, for any sports fan there. All right, very good there. Uh, hey, Jeff, what you got for us, man? Well, I got something um, that I tried to use and I couldn't get to work, which, you know, I hate to say this, but sucks. So let me sh uh, share my screen. I hope you guys can see it there. It is Microsoft Remote Desktop. Yes, what a great program this was, um, which is kind of, kind of, I thought was kind of weird that if you look, it has, has a four-star rating. 2,030 people have downloaded it. It's got uh, 4295 recommended on Google, and I couldn't get it to work. So, um, yeah, it, it's what it's supposed to do. You're supposed to be able to con configure your PC, uh, your remote desktop, to get that working on um, Windows 8. You know, you enable it on Windows 8 size. You give it the gateway. You give it, you, and I even tried putting in the the damn IP address of the PC I'm trying to connect to, um, and I couldn't get any of these little screens to show up. So um, my rant is, you know, this, you, you can't control, you, you got this remote desktop and they can't get it to work. It is just very, very frustrating. So I'm, I'm giving it a thumbs down, uh, Microsoft Remote Desktop. Uh, it's a quick review. I would like to show it, but it's just, uh, it's not working for me. So, now, did you um, enable that in your control panel in Windows? Because yes, I did. remote desktop normally isn't enabled to begin with. Yes, I enabled it. Yes, of course I did. Yeah, yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. Everything's enabled. I mean, I okay. went through the whole I thing. I just wanted to make sure, just simple things. And look at that. Look at these. You can see your remote res resources and all this. Yeah, no, you can't. No, at least I can't. Wow. So, yeah, I tried doing it. Maybe I, I need um, Yosef, uh, Joseph Yosef to kind of walk me through it again or something, but um, I couldn't get it to work. So, eh. Okay, fair enough. I've, uh, I've downloaded it, but I haven't tried to set it up yet. Hey, uh, Robert Albert, you got one for us? Yeah. Um, this is uh, an app that uh, I first used many moons ago back in high school. It was a game my father told me about that he was playing on ARPANET, and they made a DOS version of it, and it was a, called Star Trek. And it's basically a little new text game. It's called the Star Trek text game now on uh, Android. And you just go around shooting Klingons. 
and you know it's got several levels of difficulty. How many? You know, it's just a neat little game that you can play anywhere when you like sitting in line or whatever at the drugstore. It's just you know a cute, fun, small little app. Uh, most you know. Is it like Asteroids? Kind of? No, no. It's a text game. Um, it's turn-based, essentially. Okay. Now, what are you going to do for this turn? Well, I think I'm going to move my ship from this point to this point. You tell it how much you're going to move and what direction you're going to move or whether or not you're going to shoot. You know, various and sundry th things like that. It's like I said. It was, it was based off for on a game for an 8080 processor with 16k of RAM. Uh, so it th there isn't a lot to it. Now they spiced, spiced it up a little bit, but still, there just basically isn't a lot to it. But it was a fun game, and you could play it for 10 minutes or 10 hours, and you know, like I said, this is super retro back in the 70s. Very good. Used to love those those text based games, Robert. I did. Yeah, that game oh, Zork. Let you played them and loved them. Yep. I, I, All uh, the BBS games. Them. Yeah. A lot of the young folks out there, we have no idea what we're talking about. But those of you who remember, yeah, I could get back into that if I wanted to. Okay, Robert Taylor, what you got for us, man? No app tonight, Mr. Duke. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna make this real quick here. First of all, uh, my my app is uh, enhanced email. This app is not a cheap app. It is nine ninety nine. Uh, why would you want enhanced email app versus your regular email? Well, this thing is about as uh, uh, versatile as they come. And I'm going to uh, share my Android here. I have taken you into settings. And you can see I've got account settings. I've got notification settings, server settings, message settings, global settings. I can come in here. I can set a, uh, a message list limit. I can. What I really like about this is I can set up multiple accounts, and they will all show up on one screen. Okay, this thing is, uh, uh, listen, if you're needing an email app that, uh, and like I say, what comes stock on Android or Gmail isn't cutting it, you're going to be hard-pressed to find a better email app than this. I am going to say, though, beware. When I tell you that this app is $10, it's $10 on your phone, it's ten dollars on your tablet. It's ten dollars on your other tablet. It is, uh, yeah. It's not uh, buy it once and you got a license across. There's a couple of reasons for that. One, it supports Microsoft's Active Sync, and Microsoft requires an individual license for for uh, each device. But uh, tremendous, tremendous email app. That's enhanced email, gang. I believe that's all we've got tonight, and we did it all under an hour and carried a lot, covered a lot of ground. I listen, appreciate the panel, appreciate all you guys do, man. And I would play an outro, except it doesn't work. So, hey everybody, <laughs> Android Journal. Hey, and before I go, I am hosting Tech and Coffee's Tech News Week this Thursday night. Come on out, man. We're going to be talking about all the Apple announcements. We're going to be talking about anything that's been in the tech news this week, and uh, you'll probably see a few of them on this panel in that show, too. Hey, everyone, peace out. Have a great week.